we have a very special guest making his way. I'm not sure why you were directed to go that way, Senator Wyden. Sorry about that, but story uh, um, We were actually just kind of talking about you because we were talking about how most or a lot of energy policy over the years has been done through the tax code. And of course, you know a lot about that. Once upon a time, there was a little bill called the Clean Energy for America Act that became part a big part of the Inflation Reduction Act. And uh, we're really happy to have you join us today. You chair the Senate Finance Committee. You're a senior member of the Energy and Natural Resources Committee. You're also in the Senate Budget Committee, which has been doing more in the climate space lately, thanks to its new chairman. Uh, so really, we couldn't have a better member of the Senate make your long way over here to join us at the 27th Annual Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency Policy Forum. Senator, I'll invite you to take the microphone and love to hear what you have to say and what you're working on these days, and it's always really nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Well I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this a filibuster-free zone, okay? And I'm juggling a lot of stuff. You may have heard that taxes will be on the floor of, uh, of the United States Senate on Thursday, and so it's really a hectic time. And I thought I'd just walk you back through a little bit of the history here. As you know, when cap and trade went down in 2010, which was the Waxman-Markey bill, that meant that we had essentially had almost 50 years worth of gridlock on climate. We had no border adjustment. We had no cap and trade. We had no carbon taxes. We had nothing. And I was a junior member of the Finance Committee. And I said, I'm going to give this one more try. And I went up into the attic at our house in southeast Portland. And my wife was kind of wondering where I was for days on end because I was up there rummaging around looking at all the writing on this. And I was struck by the fact that the tax code really was the mother load of all of the energy provisions. I mean, literally billions and billions. And it had all been subject to something foolish even by Washington, D.C. standards. It was going to be done by extenders, which were these kind of ritualistic kind of practices which had a shelf life usually not much longer than a carton of eggs. So when we were hearing from businesses and industry that they wanted something with certainty and predictability, what they got were these near egg cartons of policies. And I said, we can do better than this. And I read, and I read, and I read. And I hit on the two ideas which became the foundation of the bill that we passed in the Senate Finance Committee in 2021, which was 90% of the final package. The two principles were technological neutrality, which meant that we'd have a market-oriented, private sector-driven policy without mandates, and everybody got to play. And the second part, because I knew I'd have some challenges with progressives on that, was the more you reduce carbon, the bigger your tax savings. Those are the two principles of the package that cleared the Finance Committee. About $380 billion was what we thought. And as you know, there are private sector projections now of hundreds of billions of dollars more. So clearly, the concept of trying carrots rather than sticks in an incentive-based kind of approach has gotten a big response. And second, I have a feeling that this battle is going to continue on. You know, I started it right after 2010, as I mentioned, became chairman of the um, Energy Committee and chairman of the Finance Committee. Joe Manchin invited me to West Virginia, and we essentially sealed the agreement 
on a vision around technological neutrality and rewards in the tax code for carbon emissions. And today we see members of Congress, particularly some of the House Republicans, having voted against this vision, now go home, take part in the ribbon cutting efforts at home, and somehow try to say to their constituents that it was their work that brought it all about. I got a book coming out about chutzpah, which is pretty important to Jewish people. That is chutzpah, to vote against it and then go home and say you're taking credit for it. So my hope is that we will be able to keep building on it. I continue, and I'm sorry that I'm juggling today, I'm going to continue to try to build on those two principles, technological neutrality and uh, the question of rewarding, reducing carbon emissions. And I think they have some applicability to some of the big fights coming up, transmission and permitting and the like. And I understand you all are going to be having big debates on what's ahead and listening to that. I'm sorry that I can't be for it. I do we want to take a question, and then I'm going to have to zip off. But is somebody just burning with a question they want to ask? Sure, and we have a microphone that we in the room. Uh, any questions for Senator White? But I, I'm sorry that I'm going to have to get out the door. We'll take one. Okay. Well, while people are working up their courage, is the book called Chutzpah, or is the it book, about? The book is, it takes Chutzpah. Okay, that's great. That's great. All yeah. right, looks like we do have a question. Thank you. Thank you, Senator, for your, for your remarks. My, my immediate question is, if we have this communications divide, how do we fix that? How do we fix the messaging so the, the, the people understand um, what, what is going on in Washington and how that is benefiting every corner of America? I hope that I went a ways to talk about some of the mess messaging. Carrots, not sticks market-oriented, private sector, technological neutrality. The more you reduce carbon, the bigger your tax savings. Look, these are not words that people talk about at every coffee shop. And I'm very much aware that I'm barely a household word in my own household. <laughs> but call it quaint, I continue to believe that policy matters. And policy is going to matter in the end. And let me close with a little quintessentially American story that I use, usually use at the end of my town hall meetings. I've had almost 1,100 of them at home. The historians had a big debate about it. And now, apparently, they have given to Abe Ibn, the uh, Israeli diplomat, the uh, development of the theory. But apparently, one day, Abe Ibn said to a group of people, the Americans always get it right. And then he paused and he said, after they've tried everything else. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Senator Wyden. Thank you so much. Good luck with everything. Thank you very much. Thanks.